know it's remember the show slick with the flows where the sparring can go who's gonna be on man you never will know guess you better tune in cause we live from chicago blah muhammad that's the king of the tweets jason anik looks like john step his hands to his feet every thursday we gonna give you a treat it's remember the show hit play and repeat uh. and retweet and retweet and retweet and retweet, it's remember the show, hit play and repeat. Huh? Here we are, episode 15. Remember the show, Jason Anik, but I'll remember the name, Muhammad. What an entry into 2021 for the UFC, man. Unbelievable. 24 fights since we last spoke. How was your week, bro? It was great, man. Honestly, just so happy to have fights back, man. I was like, it just changes everything. And especially literally Wednesday, I woke up and I was like, everybody's messaging me like, where's your big set? I was like, oh, crap. I forgot the fights are in the morning. So I sat there as I was making coffee, had to make my picks real quick, turn on the fights. It was like, it was next level. I loved it. Yeah, I saw I was too busy making French toast, right? <laughs> yeah, I was sitting there like, man, everybody's messing me. And I was like, what the, what's going on? All these messages. And they were like, where's your picks? Where's your picks? And I was like, oh, crap. The fight's on right now. Yeah. Not the, uh, the debut of uh, Khabib's cousin. And uh, I was like, okay. Right. We got another, we got another Dagestani. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, and look, and certainly a resemblance in the wig, man. That, that was awesome. That was awesome. Anyway. So we got so I'm going to start with recency bias, and we'll just talk about yesterday because what a treat to have a show on Thursday and have a UFC fight card the day before. I got to fast forward 24 fights. We just got to fast forward to the main event: Michael Chiesa, Neil Magny, matchup made in heaven. Um, just talk to me about your thoughts on on what an unbelievable, unbelievable fight. Man, that was a that was an amazing performance by Chiesa. Like he literally did everything that he had to do. And it was uh, like he just stuck to his game plan. Like it was one of those where we knew that he had to get it to the ground. We knew he had to control the ground. And I thought Magny was going to be able to outpoint him a little bit from the outside. I'll strike him a little bit from the outside. But Kiesa, with his circling the whole time, he made Magny get uh, a little too uh, forward pressure and he had to rush him. And like he was unpatient. And I, I think it was one of those two where I think maybe Magny went in there a little too confident thinking that, Oh, uh, Kiesa hasn't fought anybody really 170, anybody as strong as me, and I could beat him on the ground. Like, this was a new type of Magni where he said, I'm going to finish him on the ground. I can finish him on the feet. And you're like, man, Magni really don't talk trash like that. So, like, maybe that he felt like he had to uh, outperform to get to that next level, that next tier of guys, top five guys, get that title mm -hmm. shot where you feel like this new day and age where you have to talk trash. And I feel like Magni got out of character. And it showed a little bit in the fight where I'm like, why are you fighting like that? Like literally the only way that Kiesa can beat you is by grappling you. You're trying to take him down for what? It's interesting. Well, you know, Kiesa, I, I couldn't, help, you know, just doing what he needed to do to win the fight. You know, Herman Edwards for the Jets back in the day. I know, but you play to win the game. And it's like Michael Kiesa, certainly on Magny's side, everything you said, I agree with. It makes great sense. But, but Kiesa did exactly what he needed to do to get the job done and taking him down. And every time I thought Magny sort of had an edge, he just, yeah, he just f sort of flipped it and sort of gained control. And just the watching him fight, just how cerebral he is. And then hearing him talk after the fight, Kiesa, it almost reminded me a little of Dominic Cruz. It just, to, he seems very, a sharp mind, you know? I think it's just amazing. We talk a lot about guys and where they go after, you know, the result of a fight. Magni might have think he needed a finish. Getting a win might have been enough. For Kiesa, this is a big win. Yeah, honestly, I think it was one of those two where him being an analyst, like he was saying after the fight that being an analyst and studying guys, he gets a different input of a uh, fighter. So like he'll see different things now, and especially mm -hmm. being next to like a Cormier and a Cruz, like you learn a lot of stuff. And like I sit there and learn something new from Cormier every fight. And I can only imagine him sitting next to uh, Cormier and being able to talk with them and ask him questions. Like he sees these different things. And for his type of style where he's – analyst next to Cormier and uh, Cruz are a great grappler. So they probably teach him, teach him a lot of things. And it was all little stuff where he won the, it was all about winning the scramble. So like even on the ground where Magni took him down one time and then he scrambled, 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 got on top. It's all about getting, getting above him. And he always finished on top. He always was the last one moving. So like, and when you get into those scrambles in a fight, 
and you get to the point where the guy doesn't stop moving and then you you break because you're like oh crap he got all right he got on top let me give it to him for a little bit and you don't want to give a guy like Kiesa that because he'll stay the whole round on top of you like that and he had a couple of times where he got the early takedown and Magni would scramble 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 then he would give up then once you make that stop that's when Kiesa was like all right well let me sit here let me park here for a little bit win the rest of this round and like catch my breath a little bit too. Um, yeah, like you know. he looked gassed in that fourth and fifth round where I was mm-hmm. like, oh man, all right, here goes Magny's gonna uh start picking him apart a little bit. And yep, Kiesa did what he had to do. Like you said, like he knew he had to get it to the ground, he got it to the ground, and that's his ocean, that's where he's comfortable at. That's when you're at that level where I could be as tired as I ever wanted, like the most tired in the world. But like yep. when you're in that ground, you're in that flow state, you don't even feel it. I was about to bring that up about you tweeted about that, I think, and, that, and you could see it, you know, and he was in his element and he was still effective. Um, it is fascinating. The mental game continues to fascinate me as I watch these fighters and go through, you know, and he alluded to the fact afterwards that those fourth and fifth rounders biggest challenge is sort of being able to be ready to really, you know, he definitely battled the cardio and he, he admittedly so. So our boy, Dave Fretz, who's the best just alluded to, uh, Kiesa giving you a shout out after the fact for, for being the only other one. There it is. The only other call out on cover. There it is. There's our boy, Dave Fretz. Appreciate all the love. Um, call out. Any thoughts? I mean, I like to call out. Like I, like I said, like, I mean, me and him are literally the only guys like want to fight him. Like if I've been wanting to fight Kobe for a while. I know that he's been trying to call him out for his last two fights, but it's like one of those now where I feel like Kobe just looking for that big money fight. I mean, I know that Masvidal one's on the table. Um, it's all about whether or not Masvidal wants to take that fight. I know they trained together for a while. So obviously Masvidal knows if Kobe could really dominate him and grapple like Kobe always says. And mm-hmm. Masvidal's at the point now where he's such a big name, big money fight. Like you're going to have to pay me big money to go into a fight knowing that I'm going to get out grappled by a guy and beat up by a guy. Cause like he got all this hype on it right now. So he can't lose back to back. We saw Usman control them and the grappling points, just pushing him against the cage. And that's Kobe's world. Well, he'll push it to the cage and make it a boring fight. So like, Masvidal can't afford that right now. So, like, I mean, Kiesa made it uh, clear. Like, if you're going to sit there, if you want to sit there and wait to the end of the year for Masvidal to say yes, like, here, let's just have me and you go now. And mm-hmm. I think that would be a, another great fight and uh, a fight that makes sense, honestly. That's a uh, Kiesa coming off some big wins, and it's a winnable fight for Kobe, too. So it's like style matchup-wise for both guys. Dude, your, your division, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting excited sure. about it, man. And you still got Wonder Boy out here. I thought he was going to be out for a while, yeah, but he's been sitting there freaking posting his TikToks of him dancing. I'm like, all right, his knee's okay. All right, let's get let's get these guys going. Everybody wants to be active. It's fun. Yeah, exactly. It is, and that's what has to happen, you know, because otherwise, how long is it going to take for everybody to get, you know, within that title, you know, distance, you know, within reaching distance? You know, it's not not necessarily the number one contender, but how many fights you have to win to get to the top? That division yeah. is stacked. But either way, you just take care of business. And that's with Kiesa taking business. So anyway, Max Holloway, I see it on the screen. We got to shift gears <laughs> there. I know it was almost, you know, it was five days ago on Saturday on ABC. But what a way for ABC to start it up. The output, the performance. I mean, uh, you know, one of the best he- featherweights we've ever seen. Just, just unbelievable out of Max Holloway. I'm sure you enjoyed yourself on Saturday afternoon. Honestly, that was like amazing. It was honestly the best performance I've ever seen. And it was like when we were talking about Kiesa's flow state on the ground, Max Holloway has a flow state on his feet where he's so comfortable just boxing and staying into that level where he's just having fun. And once you're in that level and you're comfortable where you're where you're at that point where you're having fun, where you're not worried about anything, that's when the best you comes out. Where like guys that are most calmest in there and you're he was so calm with uh Qatar throwing bombs at his head trying to knock him out with every single punch he had. And Qatar had the, the most hard I've ever seen. Like still never, never dropped, never wanted to give up, never looked at his corner to say, yo, throw in the towel. Uh, yeah. The guy so much hard, but Holloway, just that, man, his combinations up and down, left and right. He's honestly the best boxer in the UFC, I think. And uh, he showed it. It's unbelievable. Well, so I, I got to touch on that. So not throwing in the towel. And obviously I'm the last person to speak on this, but you know, it's interesting. Listen to Kenny Florian and Ray Longo talk about how they get a little bit older, you know, back in the day, it was like, I would never throw in a towel in a fighter unless he wants to go out or whatever it is. In, in, there's certainly some rumblings about different opinions people have about should the fight have been stops, Herb Dean, the coaches. Do you have anything on that? I mean, I would have put it on Herb Dean because I feel like Qatar was still throwing bombs. He was still looking like 
anytime Herbert Dean told him, yo, you, you want to throw or you, you got to show me something, he showed him something. Like he was still had power. I think it was honestly like on the coaches, um, on the Anakin Flurry podcast, Ray Longo said it best where he told him like in the fourth round, I would have told him, yo, you got to show me something in these first two minutes. If you don't show me something, if I don't see something close, then I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to throw in a towel. Because like I said, uh, Max Holloway was in his flow state on the feet where it was just like he was in the matrix. He was so good. And Qatar didn't have a, a, a plan B. It wasn't He didn't have takedowns. He didn't shoot. He didn't try to uh, pull guard. You got to have yeah. those plan Bs, plan Cs if you have to. If there's like if there's that much level difference and you're getting that beat in the first three rounds, the fourth and fifth round aren't going to get any easier for you on the feet. So like you got to show them something else. You got to show me – yo, all right, maybe I take him to the ground. Maybe there's a chance I could catch him or something. Maybe if I get on top of him, I could show a good ground and pound. But mm-hmm. he didn't have any of that. And it was just, all right, well, all I got is boxing. And we already know Max was going to outbox him. So at that point, there was no winning in that fight. So by the by this two-minute point in the fourth round, I think I would have thrown the towel. Um, I mean, just for your fighter's health, he's, he's still young. He's still a beast. And uh, he's going to grow from it. But you don't want that these long lasting injuries from a fight like this, where you've seen guys go to war where uh, Junior Dos Santos and Cain Velasquez had wars and Junior Dos Santos was never the same after that in a five round fight, he got beat up for five rounds. You saw these Robbie Lawler, any guys that fought Robbie Lawler were never the same after that Condon, all these guys. And you don't want to see that for a guy like uh cater who was just like coming up as the next big star. I'm loud and clear. So I love that we're talking about fights that have already happened, you know, and w- what we haven't even touched on just coming up this weekend was just absolutely bananas, you know, get these three fight cards in seven days. So obviously we'll, we'll get to the Bix later. Um, big fight card this weekend coming up. We certainly we got a super yacht on the water on Fight Island, Mr. McGregor owning the joint. Um, the atmosphere there is just, it's so interesting. You know, if, if we weren't amid, amidst the pandemic, there wouldn't be a super yacht that McGregor is taking to to his fight. You know what I mean? It's like the stories this creates. It's just the world this creates. It's just unbelievable. It just adds to the spectacle of Conor McGregor. Yeah, it's like when it's Conor McGregor fight, it's like the the UFC Super Bowl where it's like everybody's gonna be tuning in. You're gonna have these actors. Everybody. It's not like the normal one where everybody can fly in and come to it. So it's it's a lot different this time. But the, at yeah. least the fans, there's gonna be two thousand people that Max Holloway fight. The fans over there were going nuts, so I can only imagine how they are going to be for this McGregor fight. And, man, I just can't wait for it. The Saturday is going to be amazing. I, uh, both guys looked in tune, and uh, I just want to see which McGregor shows up, talking about, oh, 18 months. I want to fight seven times in 18 months. Like, he seems yeah. hungry. But, yeah. I mean, once you get in there, once you get that big check, we'll see what comes from it after it. But, you know, oh, we have company, Bilal. She is the former Invicta FC strawweight champion. She's appeared in more UFC strawweight fights than anyone all time. Coming to us from San Diego, California. She, such an honor to have her on the show representing Alliance MMA, woman strawweight contender, Angela Hill. Hey. Hey, what's up, Angela? Nothing much. Oh, should I do it this way? Hey. How you doing? Okay, I'm good. I'm like <laughs> trying to figure this thing out. For a second, the audio was sounding crazy, uh, but it sounds good now, so perfect. How are you that guys? Might have been, that, that might have been your intro music sounding a little crazy. Hi, hey, you know, I like <laughs> to get crazy. <laughs> What's up? How you doing? How you been? Good. I, um, I'm a new dog mom, so I've been taking care of this motherfucker right here. Oh, nice. But, uh, yeah, everything's been good so far, aside from, you know, not having a fight scheduled anytime soon. So other than that, I've just been trying to stay ready and, uh, yeah, just be ready for the next coming fights, keep watching fights and uh, enjoying dog life. <laughs> Did your fight get canceled because you had COVID? Yeah, my fight got canceled uh, with Tisha in December. So I got COVID. Me and my husband both got it. Oh, and wow. um, we we didn't get too sick. Like, we were pretty sick for, like, two days. 
and then it went away. So like normal circumstances, like I always get sick during fight camp because like you're working so hard and your immune system is like, you know, struggling to rebuild muscle and everything. So I always get sick. So I was like, ah, I might just be sick, but uh, our test came back positive. So I ended up having to pull out and then they're like, oh, don't worry about it. You'll, you'll be able to get right back in there. We've been like turning people right around. And I'm like, <laughs> Big. Yeah, like, hey, you're one of the people that like step up at any moment. Like they can't get you a fight. Like all the all the times you you hook them up, they can't hook you up right now. Exactly. So I'm waiting. I feel like they got me on the back burner just in case someone else gets COVID. They're like, she'll be, uh, she'll be, um, what do you call it? Uh, she'll be. Um, exempt from <laughs> getting COVID for the next for the next three months at least. Uh, I'll be ready to go. How's life been uh, training in the garage? I said, is that the only place you train now? Is you in your garage? No, we we have our secret training places going on in in California just because San Diego has been like crazy. They've been shutting people down left and right. So we'll we'll like we'll have a secret um fight club <laughs> like text message and be like okay we're going to this place at this time be ready don't don't park in front of the in front of the gym go through the back door entrance like oh, wow, knock like that. and everything but um but yeah i've still been getting training and just trying to limit my training partners and whenever i'm out around like you know everyone else i try to make sure that i have a mask on just because i know that i'm mixing with people and i don't know where they've been so you never know when you, when it's floating around in your system but i think like a lot of a lot of the team has already gotten it and gotten over it so it's just a matter of time before everyone gets it uh so yeah it's it is what it is man like we we got to be safe and we still have to work, so it's it's just a crazy yep. situation for everyone. Speaking of working, great seeing you on the desk, by the way. I think you're doing awesome. You must love doing it. Thank you. Yeah, I do love doing it. It's um, it's uh, <laughs> I'm trying to follow in your footsteps, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I definitely love doing it, and it, I don't know. It's it's, I was happy to get the opportunity. I know a lot of girls before me got the opportunity and then you see them in there and then they were gone the next week. So I was happy that I was able to keep it going and, and uh, ESPN seemed to be really enjoying what I had to say and the insight that I gave them and the way that I, the my cadence on camera. So yeah. I was happy that all that showed through, was able to show through and yeah, I'm just looking forward to the next one. I hear you. Do you get Great nervous board. doing that be, or be like before a fight or no? Was that? Do you get more nervous doing that be, or before a fight? Um, the nerves, I do get nerves before doing it. But the good thing about it is that the nerves only last like that week. So the nerves only last while you're studying and the deadlines coming down like, oh, shit, I got like 10 other fights to, to break down and I only have two days. Oh, my God. So that's when the nerves kick in for that. But fight camp nerves are like the entire time. That's why I like short notice fights, because if I only have two weeks to prepare for a fight, I'm like, ah, it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's so it's time. Time. like, oh, go, go ahead. Dick. No, no, you go. You go. I was going to say, I tell people, oh. we'll get, we got more company, apparently. Hey. <laughs> He's coming off a big main event fight in the night win over Jack and Ransom last month. A fighter who continues to be a real problem in the UFC's middleweight division. Representing Mezzo Corona, Italy, fighting out of King's MMA. Please welcome the UFC's fifth ranked middleweight contender, Marvin Vittori, to the show. What's up? Hey. How are you guys? I'm good, man. I'm super good. Thank you. What's up, I like brother? My phone. Uh, yeah, whatever is more better, comfortable for you. Whatever is better for you. Wait, cause I can't. I mean, I can't. I can't hear your uh, below. You can't hear. John, can you talk real quick? Hearing you, boy. You can hear no, me. I, I can hear. I can hear John. But you can't hear me. Good John, I love it. <laughs> I made the same great. mistake. <laughs> I was Tony, like, "What is that?" Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. I was like, I "Wait can, a second. I it. it just works that I way. Turn the it phone just works. Phone? I've been oh, answering. Yeah, turn it. Turn it. No, right? No, that, no. Oh, you're yeah, good. Yeah, it's good. You should definitely do a parent trap one day. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin, this is John's twin brother, Jason. So is it better, or shall I leave it like it was? No, you're good. You're better. You're good either way. Okay, so maybe like here is actually easier. Okay. 
Whatever looks better for you, right. dude. <laughs> How you doing? Good. How you feeling, man? You can hear? I don't know why I can't. Can you hear me? No, now I can hear you. Yes, good, 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 good. Oh. good. Okay. Oh, no. Could you guys hear me? I can hear yep. you. Oh, okay. Everybody's oh. good? I got an echo. We're all good. Now. All right. <laughs> so, now. should we go to the game show? Uh, Al Jermaine said he was on his way home right now, so we can talk tomorrow for I a little bit. How you feeling, Marvin? Uh, did you get your fight with uh, Darren Till booked yet? <laughs> I don't think he can I hear. Don't think, I don't think he can hear you, but Marvin, if you can hear me. But Bully asked you if you got your fight booked with Darren Till yet. Bro, why can't I not hear him? Like, uh, <laughs> I can hear everybody so, less than Bully. Maybe, uh, maybe his square is muted or something. You guys hear him, right? But we, yeah, we do we hear him. him. And he just can't hear me? That's interesting. I don't know. That's Let crazy. Bro, I'm dying laughing trying to figure it out. I'm trying. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. Good, 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 good. You can hear it? You, I, he heard no, our he producer. No, he can't hear it. Dang, you just got to lip sync. Can... The producer has to lip sync what Bully is saying. And then, <laughs> and then we'll be you, you can hear it now? Hey, Bully, can you talk real quick? Yeah, yo. Hello. Bully B. You can hear me or no? Oh, no. He's got All right, Mark, we're going to have you jump back in. Hang on. We're going we're gonna to take you out and okay, jump back no, in. Now I hear him at times, and then I... That's my producer. Oh. oh. <laughs> that, you can't hear that. Producer. <laughs> that's the producer. He's not in the in the video. God dang it. This is so Marvin, embarrassing. Marvin. Oh, you, yeah, you kicked him out. <laughs> we could we could talk to Angie all night. So yeah, but um, but you know that's we'll wait for him to come back. That's in. boring. <laughs> but so 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 I don't know. He'll probably jump back in. But what you talk about the preparation? When John always says the anxiety's in the preparation and all the work in terms of the broadcasting. I know the fighting. I won't speak to that. But the anxiety's all in the preparation. Once he gets to mm. fight night, it's it's you're just sort of rolling. And working with Karen Bryant must be just awesome. Like that connection with the two of you and just if I were you, I would be so comfortable starting doing this with her guiding me. Am I correct? Yeah, for sure. Because I've been watching Karen forever. And, uh, you know, my mom was really excited when she when I told her uh, the first time that me and Karen did a segment together. She's like, oh, my God, I love her. So yeah. um, Karen's definitely <laughs> a pioneer and somebody that I look up to. I think my very first show was with Megan and she was amazing. She just mm -hmm. helped me with everything, helped me gather my thoughts. And if I had any weird um i guess weird like questions she didn't mind answering them like every all all the um all the ladies and the guys and the guys too were really cool and yeah it helped me along really well awesome you can hear me now marvin and now we can't can hear you <laughs> we can't hear you <laughs> Un unmute your mic marvin he's not on mute is he on mute? Oh my goodness. I'm We've to had a lot of language. had a lot of different things happen on Remember the Show. Guests not showing up. This is a new <laughs> one. <laughs> All right, third time's a charm. Did he uh, Did kick him out again? When God, I first get... when I first got on, I heard like a percolating sound when you guys were talking, like when I was in the backstage. So oh. I was like, oh, is that my phone or so I don't know. Yeah, maybe he needs headphones. I don't know. Maybe but, uh... it was a maybe it was an update or something. Like sometimes sometimes the apps update and then they screw you. <laughs> I, yeah, have, like, I, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Well, so so I wanna so it's interesting. So Bilal had a similar situation with COVID, but his fight got rescheduled. Whereas, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, Tisha fought. Someone, mm -hmm. you know, someone stepped in, and so, so you sort of didn't get that quick reschedule. I, here we are. Good. Hey. Dad. Are we good now? We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. There we go. <laughs> oh, hey. Okay. Good. Good. Good.
right, guys. This is the Remember the Show game show. These are the rules. Uh-huh. Mr. Mero, if you will, please. Well, anyway, there it is. The questions go back and forth, kind of like Jeopardy. You select a box on the board. If you know the answer, shout bully. If you get it wrong, negative points. Points go to your opponent. If you get it correct, you get the points. High score wins. Just remember, shout bully when you know the answer. Don't shout the answer. If you know the answer, bully. Good luck. All right. Angie, you were here first, so let me get read the categories, <laughs> and I'll let you be able to pick the first one. Cool. These are the categories for today. <laughs> first category is... Name scramble. So these oh. names, UFC fighter names that are scrambled, you have to unscramble them and figure out which one's first. Who's that baby? These are UFC <laughs> fighters. I put a baby filter on them. And you have to tell me who's that Who's that baby. <laughs> Next one is face mash. So this is two oh. fighter faces mashed together. You have to tell me two fighters who they are. And then rematch trivia. Since we had the, one of the biggest rematches ever with uh Connor and Dustin this weekend. These are all rematches that all happen in UFC. It's all trivia questions from there. Oh, man. I didn't know I had to study for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easy, easy stuff. But okay. we also have another thing for both of you guys to make you guys go a little harder. What do you got there? Oh, Algermain's here. <laughs> oh, there um, so the oh, loser lowest daddy. score. <laughs> oh, like this in. Frank daddy. Where's my <laughs> My camera. Can't see. You, you you gotta allow a camera. You get there's like a button. You see it? Okay, okay, I see it. All right. There we go. Okay. Now it's a party. Hey. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I was looking at Aljo's GoPro thing, and I'm like, what in the hell is going on in this show today? <laughs> yeah. What's up, Aljamain? Well, you were right here. Perfect timing, right before the game show started. Um. So this is how we're gonna do the game show with three people, since okay. uh, Marvin and Andy were here first. Angie, you pick the you pick the category. Whoever gets the question right between you two, then that person goes against uh Algernon. And then we go on like that. It's round robin. Whoever keeps getting the, the question right stays in, other person's out. All right. Algernon, and when you're in, once it once we go, I read the question. If you know the answer, you shout bully. First person to shout bully, they get to answer the question. If you get it wrong, you get minus points. Okay. So I'm out this one. I'm out this round. Yeah, yeah. This round is just them two. And then for all you guys. The lowest score has to do a mean tweet. There's always a mean tweet for the loser. And for this mean tweet, it's a it's a pretty big one. Uh, you're going to have to tweet it out. Cody, you got the picture? You got to tweet out this picture and be like, my prediction for this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Angela, you're up first. Pick the first category. It's you and Marvin. Oh, my sound is going crazy. Um, are you guys waiting for me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you pick the category. Okay, sorry, my sound's going crazy. Now I, I can hear you, but it sounds like uh like like like, blah, 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 like that. But oh. I'll just I'll just go, I guess. Um I'll do name scramble for 200. Name scramble 200. So if you know the answer, shout bully. Bully. Oh. Marvin. Jorgen Masvidal. Hey, look at you, Marvin. I see you. <laughs> that was quick. Okay. All right. Now it's Marvin against Algermain. Marvin, you pick the next category. Uh, I actually, I actually just understood what name scramble meant now. And so <laughs> I think that I like that. I go name scramble for uh, 200. Name scramble for, oh, we'll go 100. Bully. Marvin. Michael Kessa. There? Okay. Uh, Come on, Aljamain. What's going on there? I had the Michael, but I didn't get the Kessa. <laughs> Marvin, on the roll now. <laughs> Marvin against uh, Angela again. Marvin, you pick again. I can't hear anything. Oh, man. Okay, I'll get name. I think name scramble is my thing now. <laughs> uh, I'll go name scramble 200. <laughs> name scramble 300. Ah, uh, uh, fighting this weekend. Oh, I don't know his name. Brad man. something. Oh wait, I can't say. Uh, oh, um, uh, bullet. 
Go, Angela. Brad, Brad Tavares. There you go. Brad something. Oh, yeah. nice. All right. <laughs> Angela's on the board. Okay. Those capital letters are throwing me off. <laughs> so now it's Angela against uh, Algermain. So, Angela, you pick the category. Um, let's do let's do who's that baby for uh, two hundred. Who's that baby for two hundred? Remember, shout bully, bully. Oh, but, ah. <laughs> <For Alderman>. <laughs> <laughs> Cody Garbrandt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody's on the board now. Here we go, Mister Eyebrows himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got Funk Daddy against Marvin. You're up, Alderman. You pick. All right, let's go uh, face mash. Let's go crazy for 400. Face mash 400. This is two fighter faces. Shout bully when you know. Bully. <laughs> Marvin. <laughs> I know one of them. That's Kelvin Gastelum and me. <laughs> is it? I that so quick. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Marvin's got a pretty good lead right now. You're up, Marvin. Marvin against Angela. Um. Okay, I'll do rematch trivia for 300. Oh, rematch trivia for 300. Oh. Max Howie had three rematches in the UFC. Whoa. Oh, wait. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> three. Um. Oh, shit. What, it you said Bully. You got to go. Volkanovski. That's one. Oh, three Matt. Oh, okay. Um, Volkanovski. Um, shit. Who else? Five, ah. four, three, two, one. And I'm glad I didn't say bully. What the I, hell? I misread the question. <laughs> Marvin gets the points. Okay. Oh, he gets the point. He That's gets the point, and you get it wrong. Oh man, I'm. I'm <laughs> Marvin so against Algermain, you're up. <laughs> Marvin, pick. Uh, who's the baby? Who's that baby? Who's that baby? Let's go for 100. Oh, yeah. Uh, 300. Sorry. 300. Oh, Let's go 300. Oh, Bully. you're so asleep. <laughs> Marvin. Darren Till. <laughs> <laughs> Is that? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Marvin's running away with this game. Let's go, guys. He's killing it, man. Marvin against Angela. Uh, pick you get Marvin. Right? Yeah, you pick Marvin. Oh, I pick. I'll go name scramble for three hundred. Name scramble for three hundred <laughs> or four hundred. Oh, bully. Bully. bully, Angela, Joanna, champion, <laughs> <laughs> young jerk chick. I didn't think anybody would get that one. There were so many letters in I had to freak in, sit That's there and the write them all down to make sure I had them all right. That's the only reason I knew it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> all right, Angela I and Aldermain. But it's okay. <laughs> Let's go, Aldermain. Get in this. You're all up, right. Angela. Pick it. Let's do let's do who's that who's that baby for 400? Who's hey, that catch baby up. for 400? I can't see it. Oh, who is that? Bullet. Oh, wait, no, I'm not saying bullet. I'm not saying bullet. I'll give you guys a hint. He's he, trained, he trains with Marvin. Bully. Algermain. Neil Darius. Oh, come on. Ah. <laughs> no. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Are these real baby pictures? No, no, I got the filter. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I got that. I got those points too. Thanks, Aljo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dang, Angie and Marvin are tied. Okay. <laughs> Angie, you pick the category too against Marvin. I'm just I'm gonna just pick high hard categories and not answer. Um rematch trivia for 400. <laughs> rematch trivia 400. Besides the Cormier trilogy, who else has TP Miocha's fought more than once in the UFC? Oh, bully, Marvin. Oh man, I gotta think about it. Five, four, three. Oh think. no, two. Oh yeah, I got it. Junior Dos Santos. No, oh, at the Damn. buzzer. <laughs> at nice, the buzzer good job. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I, I was like, like, man, I gotta remember that. Like, Y'all, <laughs> you need to get him on ESPN. I was about to say, you need to handle this job. <laughs> All right, Marvin and Al Jermaine, you're up, Marvin. Pick the category. Uh, who's that baby 300? Who's that baby 300? Uh, come on. <laughs> this is a big one, Aldo. Bully. Cold Marvin. <laughs> God, Aldo, you're freezing right now. Oh my god, I'm not good at the, what? <laughs> Cody Garbrandt was an easy one. This is like <laughs> all right. <laughs> Marvin, all right. Marvin Pick. Uh face mash for 300. Face mash 300. Two fighter faces. Bullet. Bully. <laughs> Angie. Uh so Fucking um, Joanna and Claudia Gudelia. <laughs> you are correct. Yeah. All right, that was big for you. You're you're coming in. You're close now. Yeah, I'm and catching she, up. She got she my own also. Oh no, okay. <laughs> She's close. Angie and uh, Aljamain, you pick don't Angela. Call, don't call it a call. Aljo. <laughs> Aljo, come on. You gotta you gotta make it reasonable. <laughs> All right, let's do face smash again for two hundred. Face match 200. Two fighter faces. Bully. Oh. Aljo. Who's the second one? Uh, Conor McGregor. And that looks like Faziz. Uh, how do you say it? Mm, Naz, mm, uh, Khabib. Uh, Khabib. Khabib. You got it. Khabib. Got it. Got it. <laughs> I almost called him that Faz Fazayev guy. <laughs> oh, I was close to pulling that one. That would have been a good one. <laughs> That's shit. All right, Aljo back on the board. Okay. Now you're making a reasonable comeback. <laughs> All right. Let's you know, go. Aljo, you pick against Marvin. Rematch trivia for 200. Rematch trivia 200. This man had a trilogy with Matt Hughes finishing him twice. Bully. Bully. Aljo. Uh, finishing him twice. Uh, for GSP. Boom. You got it. I almost said BJ Penn. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of a confidence, Wait, he finished him. Who finished him twice? GSP finished Matt Hughes twice. Look at that belly. Oh, I thought I was thinking about who finished Matt Hughes that. twice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I found that picture. I like, did a head of poster. I've never seen GSP with a belly. <laughs> You're up, Aljo. All right, let's go. Rematch trivia 100. Rematch trivia 100. Who, who, who's, who's playing? All right, it's uh, Aljo and Angie. Oh. oh, this man had a trilogy and four rematches in the UFC. Bully. Who is this guy? Bully. Oh. Aljo, Frankie Edgar, the answer. Uh, man, it's crazy. I did not know he had that many rematches dang. in the UFC. That's nuts. He had the inside scoop. <laughs> <laughs> Same okay, hey, Aljo, a little street right now. Okay, I should Aljo, get bonus Marvin, last category. I should get bonus points for this one. Face mask. Bully. Bully. Uh, Aljo. TJ Dillashaw and Uriah Faber. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. That, was good, that was a easy one. <laughs> that was a nice one. But I came back at the end. That was a good comeback at the end. You came on a good streak, but uh, you, were, uh, you have your winner. Marvin, Vittori, the floor is yours. How does it feel to be the RTS champion, Marvin? Yeah, it feels great, man. I think... Uh, after after beating number five in the world, this is the next big thing I got I accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful win. That was a great game, guys. Thank you guys for coming on. Uh Aljo, you 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 fought, you fought back, but you're about to win the title in a couple months. So I know that title may be worth more to you than this RTS title. So it's all right. Oh, is that Annex brother? Is that his twin yeah, up, buddy? Wow. You haven't seen him yet. Uh -huh. On right now, this is crazy. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up? This is wild. Dude, thanks for being here. Oh, now he's got me on the big screen. Yeah, hey. I mean, same DNA, yeah, just just more more hair up top, you know. Um, yeah. but it's been you know, since high school, like I, you know, I don't know, he always had it, he always shaved his head. So, Aljo, man, thanks for making the time, brother. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, thanks, you guys, for having me. So, Bully, fire away. How's training camp, Aljo? 
Uh, really good, really good right now. Um, just had some sparring in with the machine tonight. And as always, he's a machine for a reason. I, I was literally going to say, I was going to make a, a poll of what takes more cardio, the, the output of Max Holloway on his feet or the takedowns of Marab. And I was like, which one's harder? Which one do you think is more harder for you? Um, I don't know, man. You can't really have a high punch output with a guy like Barack because he's always moving. Like if you start over committing and throwing something in a weird way, he's underneath you taking you down. No, I'm saying, I'm saying, which one's more impressive? Like Marab hitting freaking uh, 15 takedowns in a fight or uh, Max Highway throwing 600 punches in a fight? What do you guys think? I think the wrestling might be harder. I think. I'm biased though. I'm biased. What do you think, Marvin? You're a striker. And you're a grappler. You're a little bit of both. Marvin? I think we lost Marvin Wait, again. I, 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 I hear all, all messed up audio. Man. You get, what do you say? Let me let me read. Let me re rejoin you. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Angela, what do you think? You're our kickboxer here. You think uh, <laughs> what do you think is more impressive? The takedowns or the, the strike output? Um, I think uh, they're both impressive because like the amount like throwing like a ton of kicks and punches and like all that is it's super hard to do. But uh takedowns are definitely really taxing. So I don't know, I guess takedowns, but at the same time, that much output is so impressive that it's like you can have less takedowns and be just as impressive as like, you know, 700 strikes landed, if that makes sense. <laughs> That's good. That's good. good, Marvin. So what was the question? I said uh, we were just talking about output and like uh, his teammate, Marab, how he gets – he nonstop takedowns, takedowns, get it 15 takedowns in a fight. Or do you think Max Holloway's – uh, 600 strikes in a fight. Which one do you think is more impressive? Oh, man. Uh, like, uh, something like Max Holloway is way more impressive, I think. But, I, <laughs> again, like, it, it's still super hard to put on all those takedowns. But even is like, even as an entertainment, I think, you know, like, like punching output is better than taking yeah. output. <laughs> all right. Well, we got you guys all here. Let's get the – what do you guys picks for this uh, Saturday, the biggest uh, fight card of the year so far? With McGregor and uh, Poirier, who you guys got? Aljo. Uh, this is a tough one, man. They're obviously six years apart from the, the first fight. Completely different fighters now. I think Connor's got the speed advantage. Uh, he's probably going to be a little bit more accurate, but Dustin's a dog. And I think if you can make him a dog fight, you could pull McGregor into that. And I, I think he wants those type of fights more than McGregor wants it, you know. It's, I, I think it's easier when you're at the top sleeping in Egyptian cloth sheets and all that. <laughs> um, uh I'm still leaning with Connor though. I, I still think Connor is gonna somehow keep it clean and and get it done. But I wouldn't be surprised if Dustin gets it. It's a win. I'm on the what fence. Think, Angie. <laughs> Man, I'm on the fence too. It's so hard to to judge because Connor doesn't fight that often, and he, whenever he comes back, he always looks clean. He always gets these like nice nasty knockouts, except for you know uh, against uh, against Nate, but. Yeah, it's it's always hard to in Khabib, obviously, but it's always hard to to know um, if he's just gonna come in there and destroy again. And with Poirier, it's such a hard task. Man, I don't know. I I think I think I'm leaning towards Poirier, but I always go for the underdog. So and I always always have the worst picks. So there you go. <laughs> what do you think, Marvin? He's a little yeah, scared. I think uh, like <laughs> <he's laughs> Marvin throws it again. <laughs> Monday is frozen. It's all good. Uh, man, they announced the fight. I was like going a little towards like. Can you can you guys hear me? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. now we could. Yeah. Okay, because I hear all weird, but it's fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it then eventually. But yeah, so Monday when they announced the fight, I was like, uh, like almost going towards Poirier in a sense. But then I, you know, McGregor has a way of bringing him toward his side on on who's gonna win or not, and I think. Uh, Definitely, Poirier wants to drag it out into a war. Meanwhile, McGregor, I think, is want to like put him away early on. And um, I think, you know, I think Poirier takes a little too many shots in the early rounds, and and McGregor is a sharpshooter on those in, on those early rounds, and he has the power to to put him out. So I'm actually going towards McGregor. You almost talked me into it for a little bit there, but uh, to me, man, I think I don't know. I think it's a different McGregor. Like even as 
is talking. It doesn't look as confident. He doesn't look as as witty. And I tell people all the time, like it's a skill that you need to train. And like him not being active, literally only fighting twice in like five years. I think that's gonna affect him with his type of style, where he needs that precision and that accuracy. Like you need that timing, and that comes from being in the cage and getting that time in the cage. That's for me. I think that uh, Poirier is gonna be out there. He's gonna put that dog fight on him, and I think he's gonna finish him for me. What do you think, Jason? Oh, well, see, I, I, I was just going to say it's interesting because I don't even know if I'm authorized to make picks. You know, it's like the whole world's picking Neil Magny last week. I don't say a word, you know, I'm, but I'm allowed to gamble. See, John can't gamble, so I can bet on the fight. So I sort of put money down and don't necessarily say anything. I don't know. John's been tell, talking about how underrated McGregor's been for years, but he's been known Poirier for decades. I, I think if it gets into the latter rounds, I think it favors Poirier. I think if it ends quickly, it's probably going to be Connor. I just can't wait to watch it. Um, we were saying earlier, in fact, the, the, the dude pulls up on a super yacht. It's, if, if we weren't amidst the pandemic, we wouldn't ha- need a super yacht to go to a fight on an island. It's just the world we live in. Just It's just nuts, you know. Um, but it, I'm, I just can't wait. The UFC just delivers and delivers and delivers. For me, then you guys, the press conference today, there wasn't a lot of trash talk. Do you think – I mean, all you guys obviously are like fans of the fighting too. Like, does it make you want to watch the press conferences more when Connor's doing the trash talk? Like, it was like not as exciting to me. Does that does it like change your view of the fight when you're when you're looking at it? Like, man, Connor's not doing that trash talk. It doesn't seem the same. It doesn't feel like that same Connor McGregor. Aljo, I I think so, and I, I think. Like... Oh. Oh. Now go ahead, Aljo. Oh. <laughs> I'm saying I, I I feel like that in terms of the excitement behind the press conferences. You tune into a Conor McGregor press conference for that specific thing. You want to hear the witty jokes. You want to hear him clapping back at everybody. And um, I think he's kind of playing the nice guy game like he did with Cowboy Cerrone. He's kind of lulling Dustin Poirier into feeling like they're friends, like he did Cowboy, and then he's going to come right after you. That's kind of what he did to, to Cerrone and caught him off guard. And I think he's looking to do that same thing. Oh, no, I want to try this. I want to do this. I want to help your charity. You know, we're friends. You're cool. Oh, no, you're cool. Dude, we're fighting. We are fighting. You're not, you're not about to sit here and play Mr. Nice Guy with me. That's that's just the way I look at it. But um, I think that's what Connor is trying to do. He's such a cerebral fighter. I think he's trying to to change this the, the dynamic. Obviously, they're both dads. It's a little different now um, in terms of maturity. But I think that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get into his head in a different way and kind of lull him to sleep. But hopefully Dustin doesn't fall for it and, and get all like lackadaisical in there and really goes after it because I want to see a good fight. I don't want to see a shoulder punch stopping the fight again. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, you're, you're like one of the fighters too where it's like, do you feel like you have to trash talk your way? Obviously you had to do it to get this Peter Yan fight. But like I just think that it's more so where you're you needed a talking way to get that far. I don't think there's anything personal between you two. Like is it personal or am I just reading it wrong and so but like obviously like for you to I mean your performance has proved that you deserve the title shot, but still like you was oh you gotta prove me something else. They're trying to give it to Aldo, they're trying to give it to somebody else. So like you had to do that talking on there, but like now is it more personal when you're doing all this talking with them? I I don't think so. I think um he calls me the loudmouth, but it is what it is. Um, I've been talking crap since wrestling, you know, so that's just what we do. We, we talk crap when we play basketball, we talk crap when we play soccer, we talk crap when we play baseball, everything we did, that's how we, that's just how we are on Long Island. We, we break each other's balls and it's all funny games. At the end of the day, we're both competing. We're having fun. We're doing what we love. We're making money, we're pro- uh, providing for our families. Um, I have no ill will against him in, in that sense. At the end of the day, he's got something that I want and, um, you can't fault me for anyone. I don't think anyone could fault another man or woman for trying to achieve their dreams. And in order to get there, you have to crush theirs. And uh, that's what's going to happen on the night. Marvin, talk about trash talking. You're one of the most angriest tweeters uh, <laughs> get a fight. Yeah. Uh, did you just feel like you had to start doing that now to be more active on there? Because obviously, like, when you're calling out live and everything like that, it's, everything's so angry when you're doing it, too. And I was like, oh, man, Marvin's going nuts. He, he needs to fight. Somebody needs, somebody needs to fight this guy. Leave my, leave my guy wiping right. alone. <laughs> and I, I mean, you know, like I don't, I don't take anything. It's not that I just, I, I think it shows. It's not that I just go in thinking, oh, I'm gonna do this or oh, I'm gonna say this. But you know, also at the same time thinking that uh, all this, all the talks before a fight, uh, it's useless in a sense, like that 
it won't affect in any way your opponent or or, or, or one player role. It also a, a mistake because it's it's underestimating something that could actually do some like do something in, in the head of your opponent. And I think McGregor is good at this. And uh, I, I you know it. Uh, I think that, like Alter said, he he still it's it's in a different way in a sense because you know there is mutual respect I guess from from what they've been doing, but. Um, at the same time, when they did the face off, you can see like he's trying to play play a little games, some games there, and uh, and uh, a lot of people fall for it, man. Like we've seen it multiple times with him, and then some people don't, and we see multiple times that also, and we've seen it in their performances also, and you know you could say that they would have performed like that anyway, but we will never know. We'll, the the mental warfare. It's definitely a part of it. And um, I think Dustin felt bad for it last time. And uh, from what he said, I saw some of, some of the things he said. And he said, like, oh, I want to, uh, you know, like, how, how is the fight going to play out? And he said something like, uh, oh, uh, I want it to be all bloody. And then I want it to, to be a, like, a, like a war dropped out in the later rounds. And and the first thing I thought when he said when I when I heard that I was like, well, that's exactly what you want, and that's exactly what he doesn't want. So you either will have to make that happen, or you're going in like risking to to get knocked out because you're not you're not ready to for those early rounds where he when when he's going to try to capitalize on. Every of your, every of every one of your mistake, you know. So, and and uh, you know, for me it's the same thing. Like I, it's kind of like I I try to make my opponent see the fight the way I see. It. I don't want to see the way he sees it, you know. And uh, I think that's like uh, that's 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 a part of that's how that's a part of our game. Like he said, where you want to see the fight the way you want to take it, where you want to go. I think a lot of people are underestimating your your stand up. Like you could stand up and you could grapple. Your your grapple is obviously next level. But like in that Pedro Munoz fight, you stood up the whole time. You didn't have to take him down. And people, I think people are underestimating that when they see you about to fight Peter Jan. They're like, oh man, he needs to take him down. He needs to take him down. I was like, no, he doesn't. Like he could sit there and I'll strike him on the feet. And you're a volume striker on the feet as well. Yeah, it's um. It's not easy. It's definitely a lot of cardio work that you got to put in to get to that level. But, uh, yeah, part of the reason why I couldn't get Pedro Munoz down, I felt, was because of the wrist injury that I had been dealing with for the past few years. And um, I'm just glad I finally got the procedure done. It's not 100%, but, I mean, I don't have much flexibility in my wrist. This is pretty much all I got with my right hand. I can't oh, wow. really bring it back. It's, so it's still limited, but at the same time, it's stronger. It's not painful when I'm grappling. My grip is a lot stronger. And I think that helped me get back to with the stuff that I used to do. And, um, I, you know, I had a good good sparring session today, man. And, again, I think I could win this fight wherever it goes. It's just a matter of being mentally sharp and showing up on the night. I think that's that's what it comes down to, these fights. Everyone knows how to punch, kick, elbow, wrestle, knee. Some people do a little bit better in different things, but it's how you approach the game. I mean, you got that energy meter, you just got to chip away. Little by little, everybody's human, and everybody can be broken. Are you a, are you a light sparrer or are you a, like – I go hard when we when we go in there. We know we're we're going uh, we're going hard at practice. Are you like how uh, Matt Tyler was saying that? You know, I we were doing little, little light stuff just about movement, about timing. Or are you like we're going in? I know I'm gonna be sore the next day. Uh, I do both. I do a combination of both. I still think I'm still young enough in the game in terms of fighting rounds that I still have to make sure I get my rounds in. And um, at the same time, I kind of take that Conor McGregor Henry Cejudo approach. You know, you want to upgrade the software without damaging the hardware and all that. So I think you kind of have to step back and be an overseer of your own training because sometimes you got coaches who just push, 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 and you never really get the full benefit of a training camp in terms of growing. And they say you do most of your growing outside of the training camp, but I do believe you can make some gains in the training camp. And I think you can, you kind of learn what works, what doesn't work. And obviously you have a fight team, but you kind of have to cater to what you need. You can't always do everything the same as everybody else. And I think that's a good thing. My last training camp is my last few training camps, especially now. I think most of everything has been centered around me, even though I don't ask for that. I kind of do my own thing, kind of do my own strength and conditioning, all that other stuff. And uh, 
I make sure I, I pull together the practices that I need with my coach kind of overseeing everything. So, um, how do you deal with it now? But like being half, like you're doing half your stuff in Vegas and half in uh, New York. Yeah. So like being in Vegas, you're training with a different team. So like, are your like coaches from like uh, Sarah and Longo like hitting you up and like, yeah, hey, what do we do today? Or are they like, make sure you do this today or something like that? Or you're like, yo, I did this today. I feel like this. And tomorrow I'm going to do this. I, I kind of fill them in. I think they, they trust me enough to know I'm not going to skip out on the hard workouts to make sure that my cardio is going to be on point. And I think that's the main thing, holding yourself accountable. At the end of the day, we're all people. It's easier to go to the bar. It's easier to sit on the couch and skip this workout because you're a little sore. You kind of want to just watch your favorite TV show that just came out. And so it's easier to do these things. And you got to kind of remind yourself, put these little things on the wall or in your phone to kind of give you that reminder like, hey, we got a goal. We got to focus in mind. And this is what we got to do to get there. And I think it's all about accountability and how you hold yourself to those standards. And um, I like to think that I've been doing a pretty good job the past couple of years. And uh, so far, so good. So, yeah, when I'm down there, I just let them know what I'm doing. I send them some sparring tape. They get to give me some notes, some feedback, some things we could try. I let them know what I'm doing, how much I'm pushing on certain days, and when I'm dialing it back. And having the UFC PI for physical therapy and the strength and conditioning now, I don't have to oversee my own strength and conditioning programs like I do up here. So, it's kind of having the best of both worlds. I got the, the mind here and I got some other brilliant minds down there as well with Eric and the UFC PI staff. Well, all right, guys, I appreciate oh, okay. all you guys coming on the show today, man. It was definitely awesome. It was fun. Marvin, congrats. <laughs> you Welcome back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. Uh, I just tried to put on my, 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 my AirPods right now. And it, like it went good for the. <laughs> for the show, and then and then I put for the games, and then I start like like hearing all like weird. Sorry, man. No, no, no. You're all good, bro. Hey, it was good. We just needed it for the game show anyway. That's what the fans come to watch. <laughs> Wait, is Angela? Are you fighting anytime soon, or? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fucking begging Nick to set me up, hitting up my manager every day. Um, I'm waiting for someone to say yes. I, I think I honestly think the the problem with me is that I don't have the best record and I'm a hard fight and I'm technically yeah. up five fights right now, but I lost my last two. Um uh, according to the decision. That's what that's what makes you mad. Dude, it's like, yeah, could have went either way. And there were there were big swings where like that would have been a five five win streak and that was a title shot right there after that. Yeah, exactly. So um so yeah, I'm I'm just waiting for the next person to say yes. I think a lot of people are getting my name and saying no, uh, because they know it's a hard fight and because they know it doesn't do much for them if they're ranked above me. Uh so yeah, I'm just I'm just waiting. I'm I'll, I'll beat up a new girl too. I don't give a fuck right now. Like I just want to go. I want to get out there. I'm like cagey. I'm I, I want to hit things. I'm, I'm like my pad work feels good. I've been doing a lot of um, a lot of wrestling and grappling and judo with uh, Justin Flores and just really uh, trying to up my game with the grappling department. Really getting those takedowns down so they don't take as much energy as they usually do. And I just feel like I leveled up since my last fight, and I've been grinding since I got back from uh, from Fight Island that time. So yeah, man, I'm ready. I'm antsy, I'm ready to go. Tell them hoes to stop being scared. <laughs> All right, we got to cut that and put that in a replay. Put it on Twitter. <laughs> Quit being scared, bitches. <laughs> I need to come at him like uh, Marvin. <laughs> That's what I thought. Right? Go on Twitter, just start tagging him and doing that. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Well, you, I mean, like, expose them. All these guys cannot turn mm -hmm. down fights. It's bullshit. Expose them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I'm trying to. They never, they never write back though. <laughs> <laughs> I tweet at them. They just leave me on red. <laughs> uh, I was calling everybody out for a second, and you know, it didn't really work it's out hard. anyway. But. Yeah, it's hard, man. It's hard when you're scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all about volume. Just call them out. You call out 10 people, at least one of them is exactly. going to respond. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you guys. Uh, you Matthew, I really appreciate you guys, all you guys coming on the show. Thank you. Uh, of course. Good luck to uh, you, Aljo. Uh, we're going to be rooting for you, for sure, for the title shot. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Marvin, yeah, uh, hopefully you get that Darren Till fight coming soon. Uh Angela, yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully. Hold, uh, answer your call out. <laughs> <laughs> you got to call out. Are you fighting, bro? <laughs> yeah, when are you fighting? 
Well, I was Appreciate fighting in three weeks. Oh, three nice. weeks, we're back. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, Very guys. Cool. Very cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good Thank luck. You Thank you, John. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs>